All right, so what we're going to do today is some scenario-based training. Very, very simple, but the CERT allows us to do force on force. So what I've done is I've patted each and every individual you see out here down. And we're establishing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ugly being unknowns. So each one of them have been briefed separately, and we're going we're gonna to run a little scenario um, just in a store. You can take your pick, convenience store, or whatever it may be. Keep in mind, as with any training, it's a little bit artificial. We don't have shells, we don't have a cash register, we don't have real bullets, or none of us are getting shot either, but that's, uh, that's all part of the game. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little bit of training now. Okay, that's good. Bring it in. Imagine if that gun is in your it's face actually, for real yeah. and he's saying, give me your money. That's going to be exaggerated by a thousand times. Okay. So, so that was good. That awkward feeling of, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do, is kind of natural. Brett, I noticed that as he was, as he was um, kind of pushing her to the side, he had his back to you and you started to envelop him from the side once he saw you. And once his eyes shifted back off you, he came to you for a second to look at you. And then once his eyes shifted, you drew. So you waited for a good time to present the weapon. Um, but something to keep in mind is that if he has gun out on person and his back's to you, that might be the opportunity to, to go for it. You also got to keep in mind you got people around. So that's, these are all things to kind of consider. A lot of times there isn't a real black and white, cut and dry, what's right, what's wrong. Sometimes it's, did it work? Was it dangerous? Okay, don't do it again. So there's, there's a thousand scenarios that we can do. So Brett just said, uh, I should have verbalized. You should verbalize when, when applicable, but when your life's in jeopardy or someone else's life's in jeopardy in that split second decision, under stress, we don't know what the environment's gonna be or anything like that. So in that time window, it's kind of hard to give a verbal warning because you're still probably assessing. And it's not like we don't have, as concealed carry holders, we don't have the luxury that police officers have. And that's, <clears throat> my gun is exposed, I'm exposed, they know I'm a cop. So when you're a concealed carry holder, it should come as a surprise. Bang, there's my gun. And the next thing out should be either a verbal warning, get down on the ground, or bullets, one of the two. In that case, I think you did the right thing. I don't think there was enough time really to verbalize and you, you just kind of execute it. So that was good. By getting them in the mindset that they're actually somewhere doing something, as long as they can play that loop in their head and make it realistic, it adds to the value of the training. So if I separate the bad guy and let the bad guy know, hey, this is your scenario, this is what you're going into, and everything's kind of fresh to him too, it helps to elevate that. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna give him his brief, let him know what the deal is. I'm gonna walk him back over into this corner. I'm probably gonna let you sit for a couple of minutes picturing a movie, okay? Be right back. I mean, you're gonna cause a ruckus. I want the unknown. I want the unknown to, they, they're not briefed on this, but my, my theory is they're gonna cause a ruckus and say, I don't wanna go with you. They're gonna say something, and that's gonna cue the, everybody else to look. Okay. They don't know that, but I wanna see if that works. It should. You guys got your popcorn? Yeah. All right, cool. He's dead. All right, so what he, what he walked up and said, although we didn't get to see a presentation of the gun, which is a good thing, I'd ask him to walk up and try and take someone out of the theater, and I, I suspected that one of the unknowns, this is why it's good to have unknowns, one of the unknowns would raise a fit or say, no, I'm not going to go with you, go away, I'm watching the show, I'm watching the movie, at which point it would raise the attention of one of the concealed carry holders, and they would look over and uh, see, what, see what it involves. But it didn't work out that way. We're going to try it again, even though now everybody knows what's going on. <laughs> I Oh! 
<laughs> okay, so what just happened in the last scenario, Britt was sitting here next to Lucy, and our aggressor came in, our, our, uh, our bad guy, so to speak, came in, and what did he say to you? Uh... What did you say to her? <laughs> I lost my dog. I asked her to come outside and help me. Okay. And then you said? That I was watching The Lion King. Okay. And I didn't know who he was. Okay. And then I noticed that it started, no, I'm not going to go with you. You turned and said, do you know this guy? You said, I have no clue. So you went to guns. You pulled it out. I believe you stuffed it in her neck, <laughs> pulled her up, and, and took her out. Brett was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I think he was checking his phone or something. I don't know, but then he's like... <laughs> you were. <laughs> evidently, she wasn't that important of a date to him. So, no, uh, realistic. I know where I stand. I, but realistically, put yourself in that situation. You're sitting there, somebody take... They've got a gun out. He's watching... You were watching him as you were pulling her out. What are you going to do if you pull your gun? You're getting plugged. So you're kind of walking and ran out of space, ran out of room. But realistically, I mean... What can you do in that situation? Well, there's a couple things. You can obviously try and talk to the person, see what they need. It may result in you either, one, taking a shot that you're confident you can deliver quickly and accurately to a spot that's not going to kill her, or you might get a flesh wound. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but I'll, you have to make that decision to engage. I don't think everybody's comfortable with that decision to engage. Yeah. That's why these scenario-based training are, are so important, because it's repetitions, it's mocking, what could possibly happen in real life. It will not be the same, but however, your emotions have gone through scenario-based training similar to the emotions that you're gonna feel in real life. So it better prepares you for a real life incident. You know, I, I agree with that. And one, one just quick point is, <clears throat> a lot of times we go to the range and we shoot, and we shoot on paper targets at a specific distance that we chose. We may move and shoot, but we're drilling paper all day. And the paper is stationary, the steel stationary. We know where that target is. So we're bang, 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 bang. And we can get fast and we can get accurate, but it's not, our targets aren't dynamic most of the time. And even if our targets are dynamic, it's somewhat artificial. They don't move like real people, okay? Unless you're shooting real people, which I don't recommend for the most part. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I, should, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, situations change, things change, and it's not going to be the same distance, same target every time. It's going to be something that's going to require you to use your brain and actually think about it. So, good job. And I think